Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Strategy Guide, where we show you how to get strategic victories and tactical victories in your favorite video games. Hey guys, M12, Warthog Gaming here, back with another episode of Strategy Guide. And today, I'm going to be showing you strategy how to make your pieces or tokens, or armies, or stones, or whatever you refer to the pieces on the board in the game of Go. Um, and how to make them uncapturable by your opponents in the strategy. Now, of course, before we start, I'm going to show you how to play this game. Um, and before I do that, you're going to need two things. A board to play on. You really just need a board with all these lines on it. It could be a sheet of paper, like construction paper, just... And draw the lines on there if you have a straight edge if you want. You will need black pieces and you will need white pieces. Now I showed black first because black in the game of Go goes first. You place them down on intersections. It looks a little funny in the middle because this board actually folds and I can put the two bags of coins or tokens or stones in the in the middle of the board thingy when it's folded up. And you pretty much put down tokens. They do not have to be next to each other. But most often times people will when they're trying to surround something or capture it. Now, before we go on, there are certain um, handicaps that can be given to people who are not as good skill. Where you place down certain tokens on certain areas is generally used in, I think, in certain organized tournaments, I guess, of this game. Where, um, where, um, you're ranked by a skill level, and if you're one or two levels lower than someone, they'll give you that. But, uh, when I play games, I usually don't give any handicaps except for Kami, which is a point bonus for the person going second because they have a dis- Because the person going first has an- has the- has a benefit of going first, so they get to play on a stone first. So, if they were to place down stones from start to finish without capturing any, the the, the guy going first has the advantage, because I could easily surround the white tokens first, or easier, because, well, I have, I already have more tokens on the field at the time, because I go first, and so forth. And as you can see here, if we were to play this game, and this is the... I'm putting on these pieces as this is a normal game. And I've surrounded, as you can see right here, this white token, so I'm going to remove it from play. Now that is pretty much just the basics. You capture this token, that counts as one point. I'll set that off in a separate pile. And that's pretty much how you capture a piece. Although, if there were two pieces that needed to be captured, you would need not four, but six pieces here. Now, these two are connected, and these two are connected, but these two are not connected to these two, and these two are not connected to the ones on the end. This is what you need to capture, but the key thing with applying the strategy that I'm going to show you is capture the, the spots that are occ spots occupied to capture are not the spots are not the same as spots occupied required to connect into other blobs. So this is just a blob of one, this is a blob of two, and you and now this is a blob of four because I put that down there. Although, now that I've surrounded that, I should have removed these in the first place. You see, these corners here is what I would need to connect them. There's no line going from this point directly into the intersection next to it that's occupied by your own token. But now that it is, I now have control of it. Now, as you guys can see, I technically do not own this the tokens in the middle. If I were to own any token in the mid, the area in the middle, without only placing down a token would be right here. If I put one down right there, because that means I directly surround it on all four sides. Now, of course comes a few rules, such as this area is a suicide spot. You cannot 
a person with white tokens cannot put a token there unless it would result in the four surrounding tokens to be captured if one or all of them now on the other hand there are rules that are in place to prevent you from um, taking forever with repeating stuff and I'm going to show you this rule okay so if I go here in a situation, you can see that I can clearly capture this piece by putting a token here. And that means I've captured a second one, and that goes there. With, with those two. But because, this, because someone else could go here and capture this piece, it would never end. So there's actually a Kami rule, I think is what they call it, or... Um, I don't know, they have weird names for these. It's some sort of rule stating that you cannot go here again to capture this piece if I went here on my last turn to capture a piece that was here. Which means the opponent would have to place a piece there, and then on their next turn they'd be able to put a piece there. Although, you're just going to be fighting over one territory. It's like, um, it's like when we did the medieval fantasy, um, um, a battle sim campaign in military history and gaming club, like, my faction and the dwarves just, like, literally fought back and forth out of Fort Belegador for, like, for, like, two-thirds of the campaign. At least two-thirds, maybe more. I don't know about two-thirds, though. It, about that, I don't know. Um, the dwarves might... Eh, I don't know. Anyway. So, what you want to do now is... I'm going to show you, now that you know some of the basic rules, I'm going to show you a few things first. I did show you the basic requirements for capturing pieces, but now in the corner, I want to show you that it's a little bit different. I only need two to capture in the corner because this is the end of the battlefield, so I'm technically surrounding it and capturing it at the end here. Now, if it's on an edge, I only need three, though. Here and here are not required for capture, but are required if you want to capture, not capture, but connect those three together. So, now I have a handful right in front of me. I'm going to take all these tokens back that were supposedly captured. And step by step, I'm going to play down tokens for both sides and show you how to get this strategy to work. Okay, first off, I go there in the middle. Second move goes there. I'm going to quickly place these down. And show you what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to go there. That's going to go there. I'm going to place that there. They're playing close to me, the white, the white team, trying to, you know, try and mess up my thing or try to capture my pieces. And there. Now, as you guys can see, I now have a suicide spot right there, which means they cannot play there. But what they can do is they don't really need to surround all these pieces. They just need to capture one of my other pieces, which means they just need to go here, here, and in the middle last. Because you can't place that down then. And then place down tokens because it automatically would be captured. So, now it I believe it is their turn. They'll try and surround the blob. Now I'm connecting these together. And they're going to try and surround it. While I connect this. They're going to try and surround it on this side. And before... They can put down a token here and here to surround these two, which are not, which were not connected, are now connected. So all of my tokens are now connected, but the white tokens are not connected. Um, five of their tokens are connected. Two of them are not, which would be this one here and this one here. Although you could put one here and here. To rectify that if you wanted to. Now what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to place down another token here. 
And I'm going to do something similar to over here, but over there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put down tokens down here because I want to make sure that they don't place one here. Now there's a reason for that. Now at the current state, this blob is capturable, my black one. I know I said I get an uncapturable one, but you, you have to take time for strategies to come together. You don't want to rush perfection in here. You would just need to surround this and then put this in the middle suicide spot, which would no longer be a suicide spot once you um once you get once you um get all the other requirements to capture. Now I'm gonna put one here, which you want to do put one here because you don't want to put one here and then not be able to put one here. As long as you have one here, that's fine, because the white can try and stop you here. But then again, you can put this here. All of my tokens are now connected. And I have two suicide spots. And that's the whole point of this strategy. The whole point is to get two suicide spots within your blob. That way, when they surround the whole thing, they can't put one here because they can't capture it. Because they need to capture this one as well. And they cannot put two pieces down simultaneously, that is against the rules, as you're only allowed to put down one per uh, turn. So, what we do now is the game could continue to play, and I could keep putting down tokens, but at this point, anything connected to this blob is uncapturable as long as it's connected. It's not this, it's not this, but this, where it's connected. This is not connected. And so forth, and you just string them out into a bunch of tentacles or lines sticking out from the blob, and you pretty much got this. Now, I'm going to talk about a counter strategy, which I don't really talk about that much, on how to protect yourself from doing this. Once you get this, they own that territory, and you pretty much cannot take that away from them. They can build off that. And it can be devastating to you if you don't know what to do. Now, in this situation, I'm going to show you what you need to do here. The best thing to do is to surround it. Make a line right here and make a line down here. You're pretty close to this end. Maybe not so much this, so you're probably going to have to go out that way just so that you can contain it. Into like this one-fourth of the map. And then try and set up a base on the other three-fourths of the map. Because at this point, damage is done, they have full control of that territory and you can't take it away. The best thing to do is limit how much territory they can get from this tactic, or this attempt at this tactic. Just surround it, limit where it can go, try to make it go here, try to prevent it from going out to the rest of the map. They go here, you go here. Like that kind of thing. If they go there, you go here. You want to limit where it can go at this point. That's probably the best thing to do when you want to counter this strategy. Now, another strategy I've learned to do is make use of this uncapturable blob is to usually seal off like a whole section and make a base up here put multiple suicide spots in it and then draw like one giant tentacle that goes around to different places and do that there although you could easily block off where it can go and then you'll have to make other tentacles come off of that giant one or it's like having a tree trunk shoot out of your blob and then branches branching off it's pretty much what you want to do if you don't want to worry about pieces getting captured because let's say I own, the game ends, I own, I own 50 territory, they own 75, they've captured none of my pieces because I've used this tactic. At, at this point, it looks like I'm losing, but I've captured 100, uh, not 100, but um, say like 50 of their guys, that means... I'm now winning by 25 points, and I've won the game. Sometimes capt the units captured really can affect how the score at the end of the game 
And now that we're done with this strategy guide, I want to talk about the ending of the game. The game pretty much ends by agreement or when, um, which is usually done when both players see no more moves that would benefit themselves. And it generally ends by player one passing their turn and then player two passing their turn in succession. Now, if player one passes their turn, player two goes, and then player one sees a move that would benefit him, then he can go and the game doesn't end. It's only when both players, one after another, end their turn. It doesn't matter which person starts this, the first passing of their turn, as long as two turns have been passed in a row by each, one from each player, then that's how you would do it. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this strategy guide. If you'd like to see other board games for a strategy guide, let me know by leaving any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below. If you take the time to do so, it is always highly appreciated. And I will see you guys later in another video. Bye-bye!